One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven short waves. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Look at this. This is the GFS. You think this model has any clue what's going on when you have 11 pieces of energy just here in the North American view out in the flow? These things are going to interact in ways that the model has no idea out that far in time. And then the ensembles based on this, eh, not going to happen, my friends. This is going to be chaos galore when we look in the long range and that's why we see these models flipping and flopping all of the time that's why you have to look at bigger signals and things like that if you want to have an idea at least a direction for where you think the long longer term is going and i'm talking about one two three four weeks down the line it's hard enough to predict the weather five days in a row or for, for five days out rather much less two to four weeks and that's why we're seeing a lot of these models flip-flopping back and forth we had a good cycle overnight if you're a fan of winter weather in the east or the center portion of the country i'm afraid you've got to walk through the fire before we get back into a pattern that will be supportive of the kind of weather that you like and that I like, but we're gonna to continue to watch it. We had a couple of favorable trends overnight, which is good. We're finally starting to see some of the models turn back around from showing a torch through the whole month of January, which I don't believe in the first place. I think we're gonna get a pattern change right around mid-month. So there is the GFS. I've got a couple of weather uh, forecast for January to show you here in just a minute. Before we do that, I'm gonna take a look here at the a couple of the ensemble mean profiles of the atmosphere. I'm gonna show you the European ensembles, the latest run, this is this afternoon, okay? This is this afternoon, January the 3rd, uh, the run here today, and then the European AI ensemble mean, I'll show you that as well. And then I'll show you a couple of weather uh, forecasts that are put out by a couple of different agencies for the month of January. And we'll take a look at those as well. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. We have a good time here, my friends. Give the content a like, leave a comment. Let me know what kind of weather you're seeing, where you're commenting from. And if you have any thoughts on the pattern, always happy to hear it. Most importantly, if there's a prayer request, anything I can be in prayer about, please put it down there and I'll lift you up every day anyway. So let me know if there's anything specific I can pray about. You don't always like the forecast that I have to give sometimes, I'm afraid. And I don't always like it either, but I promise you, you'll leave a little bit smarter than you came in uh, on this show here, and I certainly hope you have some fun along the way too. This is the 500 millibar European Ensemble mean, and we are seven days out. Look at look at this. We've got we our torch is exiting stage right. You can see that here. This big ridge along the east coast that is going this way. We've got this big blue blob coming in. This is a trough in the upper atmosphere, and it is moving in as well to replace that torch. We've got some blocking here over Greenland and ridge going up along the west coast. This is a PNA ridge. When you see this, this is west coast ridge, and we call that a positive. PNA, and if you want wet winter storms in the east, oftentimes you need a positive PNA. We've got a big low up here over Alaska, which is not ideal. We want a ridge going up there eventually. And so here's what happens as we get on out toward day uh, eight, nine, and ten. Look at that weakness over the east and a big ridge continuing to poke up a little uh, less of an anomaly up over Alaska that ridge is going up this is the European ensemble mean as we get out here to day 10 there's day 10 stop it right here look at this ridge out west trough in the east can you guess where it's going to be cold 10 days out right here in the east cold air coming in out of Canada got blocking up here this is a signal we'll just put a check mark for that that is a good signal uh, for keeping the storm track suppressed and that ridge out west is good too and so we We've been seeing hints of this uh, as we get on toward the middle of January, and now we're at January the 13th, and look at that. Before even mid-month, we're starting to see a cold reflection here in the east on the European ensembles. It even gets deeper as we head toward the 14th and the 15th, and then it weakens out a bit. You get a little bit of a reflection of a southeast ridge. As ridging goes up north of Alaska, that's good. It's going to load Canada up with cold air should that come to fruition. The ridge axis is a little bit too far off the coast, and you've got a little bit of a PNA, negative PNA. So this trough back here is a negative PNA right in here in the uh, west coast. When you have a trough there, that's called a negative PNA. We don't really like that because you get a southeast ridge reflection and it's going to be warm across much of the south north you're going to be cold if this pattern comes to uh comes into place as well there you have it that is the european ensemble mean i think the uh european ensemble is too uh, antsy about or too um 
uh, ready to just put a, tra a ridge out here in the southeast. It's been doing that. It's overzealous in doing that, and it's been doing that. So here's the temperatures that go along with what I just showed you. Cool out west, day seven, warm in the east. There's the big high positive anomaly. We're going to be very, very warm in the center of the country and over to the east over the next couple of days. But look what happens. We get on out toward uh, day uh, nine and then day 10. Boy, cold weather dominating the nation's midsection, Mississippi River Valley East, warm out west. You guys are going to cook under that positive PNA. And then the next loaded cold weather. I told you it was loading up Canada with cold weather. Here's the next cold air lobe coming down out of the pole, and it will settle straight down into the west if the European ensemble mean is right. Now, I expect it's probably, as I said, a little bit too enthusiastic about building this southeast ridge. I don't think we're going to get such a big southeast ridge response. Here's the European AI. Very, very similar. Look at that. Ridge on the west, on the east coast, ridge going up on the west coast, it's trough in the center of the country, and big blocking ridge over and near Greenland, just south of there. And uh, as we approach day seven, and then day eight, day nine, and on into day 10, look at this big time troughing here in the east, ridge going way up over Alaska. Again, this will be a big cold signal if this turns out to be the case. We're just beyond day 10 here, down toward day 11 and 12. And you can really see this is a nice pattern. Boy, if this comes, uh, if this pattern shapes up, you've got a hint of energy here in the subtropical jet, which is flow along in this direction here, and you would see uh, potentially a storm system develop somewhere in the southern eastern portion of the country. If the European ensemble is right, it's going to be plenty cold enough here in peak climo, uh, heart of January, and blocking up here, just a little signal for that at, uh, south of Greenland as well. That would be good to kind of suppress the storm tracks. So this is a very, very good looking pattern if you like east coast winter storms. I would like to see this anomaly maybe a little bit farther back toward the Great Lakes or Ohio Valley, but still, uh, beggars can't be choosers. It's very, very good and in terms of temperatures. Again, very similar to the European day seven, eight, nine. Uh, we get on out here toward the 13th of January. Very, very cold weather, particularly around the Great Lakes, and then everywhere in the east is shaping up to be very cold, according to the European AI Ensemble, even out through the 16th. And uh, that just sort of reloads. And again, it sort of gives you a little bit less of a uh, uh, instance of a southeast ridge. So I think we're probably more in this type of a ballpark and this cold air will bleed into the plains, into the nation's midsection and eventually bleed south. And this is again up about a mile off the ground. Sometimes in the winter time and you get certain patterns in place and this could be one of those, cold air can be shallow at the surface and the leak in under where it looks like it's warm. It's really not. It's really cold at the surface. And so I think that's kind of the pattern that the European AI ensemble is showing. And I still expect there's a little more southeast ridge on the model than we will actually see when we get out toward the end of the run, which it puts us out toward January the 18th. So that's 15 days from now. So there are a couple of the ensemble mean runs, the latest data that's come out. I wanted to show you that the GFS translates everything back warm over here. It gives you a big ridge in the east at the end of the run and back out to the west. You get a trough. I don't think that's going to be right. I think some of the tropical forcing metrics we're looking at and some of the other data that I'm seeing supports this kind of a scenario more than the GFS a scenario plus the GFS is a little wonky with how it depicts the upper air pattern. Look at this. This is the Weather Channel forecast for the month of January, and look at look look where it's cooler than normal. You see this from Minneapolis over toward uh, just to the east of St. Louis and then down towards South Carolina, and then up from there to the northeast. Very cold up in New England. I expect that to be the case. Now watch what happens here. Very warm out west. If it is going to be cold in the east in terms of the average temperature for the month of January, if it's going to end up being below in these areas, we're going to have to have a pretty cold second half of January because we're going to start off. I mean, we're a little bit below normal right now, but we are going to bake over the next week. And so we're going to have to erase all of those cold and uh, warm anomalies and replace them with enough cold weather to flip the map to blue by the time all said and done, if the Weather Channel's map is to be right. And BAM weather is very similar as well. It's got... Uh, He's got uh, very, very cool temperatures across much of the northern tier back in the Tennessee Valley and up from the uh, upper southeast and then really cold up around the Great Lakes. That is his January forecast. And if we scroll down here, you can see where the above normal precipitation is along the east coast. If these two link up, if we get below normal here and above normal precipitation here, we are going to see the winter storm threat really pick up from the Great Lakes upper southeast into, uh, into the northeast. So that would be... Uh, 
very, very good for winter weather prospects if BAM's weather outlook came to uh, fruition. So that's what we're watching, my friends, in terms of the pattern over the course of the next several weeks. And I'll keep you posted if anything changes. But right now, my expectation is for a colder and stormier second half of January. That's what we're looking at in the data. And I think that's what we're going to end up seeing. Now, right now, we've got a lot of weather that's happening in the west, not so much in the east. But can you find the United States on this map? You can see a little bit of it here. Look at all this cloud cover. Big storm systems coming in, rolling in. A lot of rain and snow out here in California, up in the Pacific Northwest. Cloudy across the northern tier, up in the northeast, and back through the Tennessee Valley in the southeast with the southern tip of Florida being the exception in, the, in and around Tennessee and in the southern plains we have a little bit of sunshine out here but that's about the only sunny area that we see here's the radar and you can see over here in California that's where we're seeing the heaviest rain in and around Eureka towards Sacramento back down in uh, just you know to the west and north of Los Angeles up toward Fresno seeing some showers with some heavy rain in here you're going to see some really, really heavy snow pile up in the Sierra Nevadas over the next several days to the tune of as much as five feet above 6,000 feet. So looking for a lot of snow out there, a lot of rain along the West Coast, a lot of snow in the air. Anybody in Ohio that... Um, that, that post in the comments, that I, I, don't, I can't remember. Uh, if you have any folks in Ohio or even up in Michigan that uh, post occasionally here in the comments, let me know if you're seeing snowflakes in the air. The radar looks like you are. I thought it was going to be really hot, not snowy there, but uh, I might be wrong. You know, I don't know. My friend Dan over here in, near around Pittsburgh, probably seeing some snow off and on and got some friends back in uh, Nashville and up into Kentucky as well or up in Tennessee and Kentucky, not seeing any snow in those areas. Look at this, little, maybe a little snow in central Virginia. The model's trying to depict it. I'm not sure if it's actually snowflakes reaching the ground, but if there are any reports of that, put it in the comment section. And of course, we're still seeing lake effect snow. And as this clipper moves through, we'll see a little bit more in the way of lake effect snow as well. Not really any alerts out east for the most part, except around Sault Ste. Marie. Got, uh, I think, some cold weather stuff going on there. And then over here in, uh, in and around... Um, uh, off of Lake Ontario in Oswego County, still seeing a winter storm warning for lake effect snows out there. High wind warnings in and around Cheyenne to Casper, looking for winds gusting into the 60s with sustained winds in the 30s, winter uh, red flag warnings uh, in and around the Denver area. And then over here toward uh, California is where we see all the alerts. Look at these. We've got winter storm warnings up from the northern uh, mountains up here in California, all the way down the Sierra Nevadas, even uh, avalanche issues potentially with heavy, heavy, heavy snow over the next several days. Going to see as much as five, six, seven feet in some of the highest peaks out here and flood alerts in northern california and also in and around bakersfield so a lot of rain going to fall out here here's the rapid refresh and you can see rain falling across the southern tier of the country down here in the southeast and over in eastern north carolina that will be moving out and more rain coming in in california and around the west coast the pacific northwest this clipper moving through the great lakes will provide you all some snow up there but the nation's midsection very very nice weather few clouds out here, but not a lot in the way of snow uh, or rain, for that matter, going to be a very nice day with high pressure in control. Let's go here and we can see the whole picture. And look at this. We get on into tomorrow morning, rain still raining in California in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, around Seattle, Portland, you all, Salem, getting some rain and uh, up and down the Cascades into the Sierra Nevadas. Very, very heavy snow. Rocky Mountains picking up some snow there. Going to see as much as a foot or two in the higher peaks out there as well. Another little clipper system working across the north. This is going to be the last one of those as we head towards Sunday evening and then toward the overnight hours, Sunday night and the Monday morning. Still snowing out west. And there comes that clipper through the Great Lakes. Turn those winds around. Maybe get a little bit of lake effect snow behind that. But uh, outside of that going to start to see that warm-up take hold in earnest and uh, more rain coming into California. So it's going to stay wet out there and very unsettled. You guys are going to pick up a lot of rain. Look at this. Along the coast, coastal range and down here into the Sierra Nevadas, six, eight inches of precipitation. A lot of that's going to be rain in the lowlands, but up in the higher elevations, as I said, we're going to see plenty of snow. Look at all of that precipitation up here. The coastal range, Olympics, and in the northern Cascades going to continue to see the rain pile up to the tune of 8 to 10 inches up there. 
So really got to keep your eyes open if you're driving around in some of the higher mountain peaks and uh, another signal for rain in the Tennessee Valley through the Great Lakes as well. This is over the next seven days. Here is the temperature profile and atmosphere over that time period as well. Look at this European ensemble cold up here in the Great Lakes, Pacific, uh, the Pacific Northeast, the Atlantic Northeast rather, and uh, going to see that continue through Sunday, tomorrow into the overnight hours. Monday is the last day of cold air up here in the northeast and look what is coming a big red blob and white colors are very very warm this is temperatures 15 to 16 to 20 above normal so we're probably going to set some records out here again in the nation's midsection and it's just going to be warm all through next week until we get toward the middle and end of the week we'll start to see cooler weather pushing in off of uh, the Pacific and dropping out of uh, the near Alaska and Yukon territory. Well, not Alaska's not a territory. Yukon's a territory. You're going to see uh, cool weather dropping in out of Canada into the United States. And again, there comes that uh, cool signal that I was showing you on the long range earlier. But it's going to be warm next week. High temperatures as we look toward this afternoon. You guys have already seen these highs below freezing uh, from essentially Pennsylvania to northern Illinois and Indiana up through Iowa and northern South Dakota. Everybody below that above freezing and really warm down here across the southern tier with temperatures poking into the 60s in the plains. That's going to get even warmer tomorrow with 70s. Cooler weather still hanging on in the Great Lakes in the northeast up here, but that is coming to an end. And as we get into Monday, less and less cool weather. One more really cold day up in Maine and northern Vermont. Vermont and New Hampshire. Look at these 80s creeping into Florida and Texas across the south and that would just get warmer and warmer and uh, not many areas below freezing by the time we head on into Tuesday. We'll take a look at one more just for funsies. Look at that. It's very very warm in the southern quadrant of the country. Just a little bit chillier across the north, of course, the Rocky Mountains as well. If you want to take a look at how the weather actually will play out over the next couple of days, here comes a clipper, another clipper coming in as we head in toward Mon uh, Monday morning. Very rainy and stormy out west with snow and uh, another little system as we get on in toward Tuesday evening. But most of that is going to be rain until you get to the far north and across the border into Canada. And as we head toward Wednesday morning, we're going to start the day with a little bit of rain, maybe some snow up here in northern Maine, but mostly some showery weather. And of course, out in the nation's, uh, well, I was going to say in the nation's midsection, it's going to be very very tranquil and fair weather with sunny and uh, high pressures in the control there. But if you get to the northwest, that's when you're going to start to see unsettled weather yet again. And that will continue through the course of the week. That's the forecast for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. If anything changes the long range, I'll let you know. But right now I'm looking at a uh, pattern flip sometime around mid-month, either side of mid-month, and uh, look for colder and stormier conditions on and off in the east. And the last thing I'll say about that, as I, you know, if you're hearing people talk about on social media, it's going to be warm for the rest of the winter. That's ridiculous. It's going to be cold for the rest of the winter. That's ridiculous. We're going to see variable weather. You're going to see cold shots. You're going to see warm shots. I'm not seeing anything in the pattern that leads me to believe that we're going to be uh, completely hostile through the rest of January into February and into March. It's going to be variable. We're going to see cold shots come in. Canada reload with cold air. The United States is going to warm up some. We're going to get into some patterns that are very cold and favorable for winter weather too. Just got to put all the pieces together and that's what we're looking at as we head toward the uh, second half of the month here. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be back tomorrow with another update. In the meantime, take care everybody. Have a great day and God bless.